guys, hello guys, I'm very happy today to let you see this uh, Bruce Lee facts, the real story of Bruce Lee. So Bruce Lee, born in November 27, 1940, and he died, sorry to say, to July 20, 1973. He was a Chinese-American, Hong Kong actor, martial artist, martial arts instructor, philosopher, movie director, movie producer, screenwriter, and founder of the Jeet Kune Do martial arts movement. Lee is famous for making martial arts popular in the United States in the 1970s when he played in a series of movies. This includes the first ever martial arts movie in the United States called Enter the Dragon. He was the most successful and famous, which was released after Bruce's death. He died in 1973 during the production of a movie called the Game of Death. The movie was not finished, although some complete sections were later released. Almost 20 years later, his son, Brandon Lee, would also die while making a movie. Lee also though other people martial arts, including actors like Hugo Cherry, Steve McQueen, James Coburn, and basketball player Karim Abdul-Jabbar. He inspired many other actors who are famous for using martial arts in their movies, including Jackie Chan, Jet Li, and Chuck Norris, and Jean-Claude Van Damme. Jackie Chan had the small part in Enter the Dragon, and Chuck Norris co-star in The Way of Dragon. Lee, he do these five movies, including The Big Boss, Feast of Fury, also known as the Chinese Connection and the Iron Head, the Way of Dragon, also known as Return of the Dragon, Enter the Dragon and the Game of Death. He is known for his major contribution to both the Hong Kong and American movie industry during the 1970s. His martial arts movement are very innovative ideas, including Jeet Kune Do. His philosophy and his physical fitness ability is considered to be a cultural icon and is considered to be one of the most influential martial artists ever, uh, ever done by social critics and other martial artists alike. Unfortunately, on the night of July 20, 1973, Lee, at age of 32, died at his home from cerebral edema which is a build-up of fluid around the brain. This is believed to have been caused by reaction to painkillers that he was taking for a back injury. So, it's a long story, so. Bruce Lee Fathers, that uh, is called Lee Ho Chuan, was a famous country opera singer based in Hong Kong. In December 1939, his parents went to Chinatown in San Francisco in California for an international opera, opera tour. Sorry, my wife. He was born there on November 27, 1940, making him a dual Hong Kong and United States citizen by birth. At four months old, April 1941, the Lee family returned to Hong Kong and soon after, the Lee family led an unexpected for real art life as Japan in the midst of World War II. Launched a surprise attack of Hong Kong in December 1941 and ruled for four years. Bruce's father, Lee O. Chuan, was Cantonese and his mother, Grace Ho, was an Eurasian ancestry. Lee's maternal grandfather was Cantonese, his maternal grandmother was English, and his maternal uncle, Robert Ho, too was a successful Hong Kong businessman of Dutch, Jewish, and Cantonese descent. descent so his career and education. In 1940, until 1940 to 1958, he enrolled school in a martial arts initiation. His father, Leo Chuan, was a famous Cantonese opera star. As a result, the Junior League was introduced to the world of cinema at a very young age and appeared in several films as a child. 
Liadi's first role as a baby was carried into the stage in the film Golden Gate Girl. He took his Chinese stage name as Zhu Fang. Li the Little Dragon for the fact that he was born in both the Howard and the Hero of the Dragon by the Chinese Zodiac. So he had two names, Zhu Fang that mean it come back and Little Dragon. So official in movies he was called Little Dragon. Sorry for the problem. As a nine-year-old, Wood co-star with his father in The Kid in 1950, which was based on a comic book character and was his first leading role. By the time he was 18, he had appeared in 20 films. After attending Tak Soon School, several blocks from his home at 208 Mata Road, Kulong, Lee entered the primary school division of the Catholic La Salle College at the age of 12. In 1956, due to poor academic performance and possibly poor conduct, he was transferred to St. Francis Xavier College, where he would be mentored by Brother Edward, the teacher and coach of the school boxing team. After Lee was involved in several street fights, his parents decided that he needed to be trained in the martial arts. Lee's friend, William Chow, introduced him to Hip Man, but he was rejected from learning with Chang Kung Fu under him because the long-standing rule in the Chinese martial arts world not to teach foreigners. Is one quarter German uh, is one quarter German background from his father's side would be an initial obstacle toward his Wing Chun training. However, Chong would speak on his behalf and Li was accepted into the school. Li began training in Wing Chun with Yip Man. Yip Try to keep his students from fighting in the street, street gangs of Hong Kong by encouraging them to fight in an organized competition. After the year into his Wing Chun training, most of the Pamans other students refused to train with Lee when they had learned of his mixed ancestry. As the Chinese were generally against teaching their martial art techniques to non Asians. Lee's parent partner, Osi Chong, states probably fewer than six people in the whole Wing Chun clan were personally taught or even partly taught by Yip Man. However, Lee showed a keen interest in Wing Chun and continued to train privately, privately with Yip Man, William Chen, and Wong Shun Lim. In 1958, Bruce won the Hong Kong School Boxing Tournament, knocking out the previous champions, Gary Helms, in the final. The year Lee was also a cha 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 dancer, winning Hong Kong's Crown Colony Cha Cha Championship. From 1959 to 1964, sorry for my English, continued studies and martial arts breakthrough. In April 1959, Lee's parents decided to send him to the United States to stay with his older sister, Agnes Lee, who was already living with family friends in San Francisco. After several months, he moved to Seattle in 1959 to continue his high school education, where he also worked for Ruby Cho as a la uh, live-in waiter at a restaurant. Cho's husband was a co-worker and friend of Lee's father. Lee's elder brother, Peter Lee, would also join him in Seattle for a short stay before moving on to Minnesota to attend college. That year, Lee also started to teach martial arts. He called what he thought Jung Pan Kung Fu, literally Bruce Lee's Kung Fu. It was basically his approach to Wing Chun. Lee completed his high school education and received his diploma from Edison Technical School on Capitol Hill in Seattle. In March 1961, Lee enrolled at the University of Washington and studied dramatic subjects, philosophy, psychology, and various other subjects. Lee dropped out of college in early 1964 and moved to Oakland to live with James Jim Lee. James Lee was 20 years senior to Bruce Lee and a well-known Chinese martial artist in the area. Together they found the second Jufan martial arts studio in Oakland. 
James Lee was also responsible for introducing Bruce Lee to Ed Parker, an American martial artist. At the invitation of Parker, Lee appeared in the 1964 Long Beach International Karate Championship and performed repetition of two finger to shot, using the thumb and the index finger of one end, with feet at approximately shoulder wide apart. 1966-1970, American roles are created in Jeet Kune Do. From 1966 to 1967, Lee played the role of Kato, alongside the title character played by Van Williams in the TV series produced and narrated by William Dozier, titled The Green Hornet. Based on the radio show by the same name, the show lasted only one season, with 26 episodes. From September 1966, 1960, Six to March 1967. Lee and William also appeared as their character in three crossover episodes of Batman. Another William those yeah, produced <laughs> this is uh, the hag uh, how to say Easter egg of the video. Another William those yeah, produced the television series. The Green Hornet introduced the adult Bruce Lee adult Bruce Lee to an American audience and became the first popular American show presenting Asian style martial arts. The show's director want Lee to fight in the typical American style using fists and punches. As a professional martial, art, martial artist, Lee refused, insisting that he should fight in the style of his expertise. At first, Lee moved so fast that this movement could not be caught on field, so he had to slow them down. After the show was cancelled cancelled in 1967, Lee wrote to Dozier, thinking him for starting my career in show business. In 1967, Lee played a role in one episode, episode of Hide on Side. Jeet Kundo originated in 1967. After filming one season of The Green Hornet, Lee found himself out of work and opened the Jung Fang Kung Fu Institute. Lee decided to develop a system with an emphasis on practically flexibility, speed and efficiency. He started to use different methods of training such as weight training for strength, running for endurance, stretching for flexibility and many others which he constantly adapted, including, including fencing and basic boxing, boxing techniques. Lee emphasized what he called the style of no style that consists of getting rid of the formalized approach which Lee claimed was indicative of traditional styles. Lee felt that even the system he now called Jung Fang Kung Fu was too restrictive and it, it, <coughs> it eventually evolved into a philo philosophy and martial art he would come to call Jeet Kune Do, or the way of the intercepting fist. It is a term he would later regret because Jeet Kune Do implies specific parameters that styles connote, whereas the idea of his martial art was to exit, exist outside of parameters and limitations. In 1969, Lee made a brief appearance in the Silicon Pen film Marlow. The same year he was credited as the karate advisor in The Breaking Crew, the fourth installment of the Matt Helm comedy spy fi film st starring Dean Martin. Also that year, Lee acted in one episode of Here Come the Brides and Blondie. In 1970, he was responsible for fight choreography for a walk in the Spring Ray, starring Ingrid Bergman and Anthony Quinn, again written by Silifon. In 1971, from 1971 to 1973, Hong Kong films and Hollywood breakthrough. In 1971, Lee appeared in four episodes of the television series Long Street, written by Silifan. Lee played Lee Tsung, the martial arts instructor of the title character Mike Longstreet, played by James Francisco. An important aspect of his martial arts philosophy were written into the script. According to statements made by Lee and also by Linda Lee Cadwell after Lee's death in 1971, 
Lee pitched a television series of his own tentatively titled The Warrior, discussions of which were also confirmed by Warner Bros. During December 9, 1971, television interview on the Pierre Berton show, Lee stated that both Paramount and Warner Brothers want him to be in a modernized type of a thing, and that they think the Western idea is out, whereas I want to do the Western. According to Cadwell Awareness, Lee's concept was retool and renamed Kung Fu, but Warner Bros. gave Lee no credit. Warner Bros. Warner Brothers states that they had for some time been developing an identical concept created by two writers and producers, Ed Spielman and Howard Friedlander in 1969, as stated to by Lee's biographer Matthew Pauley. According to these sources, the reason Lee was not cast was because he had a thick accent, but Fred Rentrow attributes that to his ethnicity. The role of the Shaolin monk in the Wild West was eventually award, award in the non-martial artist David Carradine. In the Pierre Berton show interview, Lee stated he understood, he understood Warner Brothers. Attitudes toward casting in the series, they think that business-wise it is a risk. I don't blame them. If the situation were reversed and an American star were to come to Hong Kong and I was the man with the money, I would have my own concern as to whether the acceptance would be there. Producer Fred went through as advised Lee to return to Hong Kong and make a feature film which he could showcase to executives in Hollywood. Not happy with his supporting roles, in the U.S., Lee returned to Hong Kong, unaware that the Green Hornet had been played, played to success in Hong Kong and was unofficially referred to as the Gato Show. He was surprised to be recognized as the star of the show after negotiating with both Show Brothers Studio, Studio and Golden Harvest. Lee signed a field contract to star in two films produced by Golden Harvest. Lee played his first leading role in The Big Boss, 1971, which proved to be an enormous box office success across Asia and catapulted him to stardom. He soon followed up with Feast of Food in 1972, <clears throat> which broke the box office record set previously by the big boss. Having finished his initial two-year contract, Lee negotiated a new deal with Golden Harvest. Lee later formed his own company, Concord Production, with the Raymond Chu for his third film, Way of the Dragon, 1972, he was given complete control of the film's production as the brighter director, star, choreo choreographer, and fight scenes. In 1964, a demonstration in Long Beach, California, Lee met karate champion Chuck Norris, the world champion, seventh time world champion. In Way of the Dragon, Lee introduced Norris to moviegoers as his opponent. The showdown has been characterized as one of the best fight scenes in martial arts and film history. The role had originally been offered to American karate champion Joe Lewis. Fist of Fury and Way of the Dragon went on to gross an estimate in US dollar 100 million and 130 million worldwide, respectively. From August to October 1972, Lee began work on his fourth Golden Harvest film, Game of Death. He began filming some scenes, including his fight sequence with 7 feet 2 inches, 218 centimeter American basketball star Karim Abdul Jabbar, his former student. Production stopped in November 1972 when Warner Brothers offered Lee the opportunity to start in Enter the Dragon. 
the first film to be produced jointly by Concord Golden Harvest and Warner Bros. Filming began in Hong Kong in February 1973 and was complete in April 1973. One month into the filming, another production company, Star Seas Motion Pictures, promote Bruce Lee as a leading actor in Feast of the Unicorn, although he had merely agreed to choreograph the fight sequence in the film as a favor to his longtime friend Unicorn Chan. Lee planned to shoot the production company, but retained his friendship with Chan. So, however, only a few months after the completion of Ender the Dragon and six days before its, it's in July 26, 1973, he died. <coughs> so, Enter the Dragon would go on to become one of the year's highest grossing films and seemingly as a martial arts legend. It was made for uh, US dollar 850,000 in 1973, equivalent to 4 million adjust for inflation as of 2007. Enter the Dragon is estimated to have grossed over 400 million dollars worldwide, estimated to be the equivalent of over 2 billion adjust for inflation as year now, in this year, 2022. So 400 million in 1973 is 2 billion. Now, the film sparked a brief fad in martial arts, epitomized in song such as Kung Fu Fighting, that I hope they put, when you do the video like that, I can put Kung Fu Fight without problem of copyright. Because what is a video of Bruce Lee without Kung Fu Fighting? Yeah, they can use uh, in Kung Fu Panda. He asked that we are real martial artists, that we do martial arts. For all our life, we can put Kung Fu fighting in our videos. In 1978, there is a posthumous work. Robert Close, the director of Enter the Dragon, together with Golden Harvest, revived Lee's unfinished film Game of Death. Lee had shot over 100 minutes of footage, footage, including outtakes for Game of Death, before shooting was stopped to allow him to work on Enter the Dragon. In addition to Abdul Jabbar, George Lazenby, Aikido Master Jin Han Jai, and then others of Lee's students, then Inosanto, still alive. We are, we are also, were also to appear in the film which was to culminate in Lee's character Haitian clad, clad in the now famous yellow track suite. Taking on a series of different challengers on each floor as they make their way through a five level pagoda. In a controversial move Robert Cloud finished the film using a lookalike and our key footage of Lee from his other films with a new storyline and cast, which was released in 1978. However, the Cobb Together film contained only 15 minutes of actual footage of Lee, yet print many unsuccessful, unsus, many unsuccessful takes, while the rest had the Lee lookalike, Kim Tai Chung and Yuan Biao as a stunt double. The news footage Lee had film was recovered 20 years later and included in the documentary Bruce Lee, A Warrior Journey. <coughs> Boy, there is also, the, here is not written, so I see, there is the exploitation so, of Bruce Lee. Try, they do a lot of, they search a lot of social impersonators that are looking like Bruce Lee had to do, I don't know, hundreds of movies in Hong Kong uh, and also some character, Jackie Chan, is a, an impersonator of Bruce Lee. So Jackie Chan is part of the Bruce exploitation, but then it became his own because Jackie Chan, he say, I don't want to be another Jackie, uh, Bruce Lee, I want to be Jackie Chan. So all the other are same, Donnie Yen, 
Jet Li is all exploitation. <clears throat> Apart from Game of Death, other future film projects were planned to future Lee at that time. In 1972, after the success of the big boss in Fist of Fury, a third film was planned by Ramon Cho, a golden harvest to be directed by Lu Wei, titled Yellow Face Tiger. However, at that time, Lee decided to direct and produce his own script for The Way of the Dragon. Instead, although Lee had formed a production company with Raymond Cho, a period, of, a period film was also planned from September to November 1973 with the competing Show Brothers Studio. Studio to be directed by either Chor Chor Yuan and Chen Kang and written by Yi Kang and Chang Che, titled The Seven Sons of the Jade Dragon. In 2015, Perfect Storm Entertainer Bruce Lee's daughter, Shannon Lee, announced that the series The Warrior will be produced and would air on the cinema. And filmmaker Justin Lin was chosen to direct the series. Production began on October 22, 2017, in Cape Town, South Africa. The first season will contain 10 episodes. In April 2019, Cinemax renewed the series for the second season. March 25, 2021, it was announced that producer Jason Cotter has acquired the right to the silent flu to become a miniseries which will have John Fusco as a screenwriter and executive producer. Okay, so we have a little uh, about his personal life, proprio for Fidish. <clears throat> Lee's Cantonese birth name was Lee Jun Fan. The name of homophonically means return, return again, and was given to Lee by his mother, who felt he would return to the United States once he came of age. Because of his mother's superstitious nature, nature she had the original name Im Siphon, which is a feminine name meaning small phoenix. The English name Bruce is though to have been given by the hospital attending physician, Dr. Mary Glover. Li had three other Chinese names, Li Yuan Cham, a family clan name, Li Yuan Kam, which he used as a student name while he was attending La Salle College, and his Chinese screen name, Li Shu Long. Shu Long means little dragon. Li's given name, Jun Fan, was originally written in Chinese as okay, ideogram you search, however, the Jun Chinese character was identical to part of his grandfather's name, Li Jun Biu. Hence, the Chinese character for Jun in Li's name was changed to the homonym Jun in another ideogram instead to avoiding naming taboo in Chinese tradition. Try is a taboo name. Lee's father, Li Ho Chuan, was one of the leading Cantonese opera and filming actors at the time and was embarking on a year-long opera tour with his family on the eve of the Japanese invasion of Hong Kong. Li Ho Chuan had been touring the United States for many years and performing in numerous Chinese communities there with success. Although many of his peers decided to stay in the U.S., Li Ho Chuan returned to Hong Kong after Bruce's birth. Within months, Hong Kong was invaded and the Lees lived for three years and eight months under Japanese occupation. After the war ended, Li Ho Chuan resumed his acting career and became a more popular actor during Hong Kong's rebuilding years. Huh? Easter egg. Lee's mother, Grace Ho, was from one of the wealthiest and most powerful clans in Hong Kong, the Ho Tung. She was the half-niece of Sir, Sir Robert Ho Tung, the Eurasian patriarch of the clan. 
As such, the young Bruce Lee grew up in an affluent and a privileged environment. Despite the advantage of his family status, the neighborhood in which Lee grew up be became overcrowded, dangerous, and full of gang rivalries due to an influx of refugees fleeing communist China's China for Hong Kong at the time of British Crown Colony. Grace saw his, his report as either the adopted or biological daughter of Ho Kong Tong, Ho Gum Tong and the half niece of Sir Robert Ho Tang, both notable Hong Kong businessmen and philanthropists. Bruce was the fourth of five children, Faber, Lee, Agnes Lee, Peter Lee, and Robert Lee. Grace's parentage remains unclear. Linda Lee, in her 1989 biography, The Bruce Lee Story, suggests that Grace had a German father and was a Catholic.